To consistently have the supernatural in your life, you must be con consistently submissive to the Holy Ghost. You must be prayerful. You must be humble. You must stick to God's word. Because you know it is not by your power. So that causes you, the more you see the miracles, and the more submissive you are, the more miracles you're going to see. And that means that you will not want to get out from the realm of God's spirits and guidance in your life. You see why it is easier for such a man to walk in the light of God than the one who doesn't have it. I mean, you don't have to. Hey, how many of you know you don't need to pray much to come and read something? If you want a revelation from heaven, you have to be submissive to the Holy Ghost. But if you're going to put several books together and analyze them on Sunday morning, why do you have to pray? Go into your library, put down the books and start reading. Anybody can do that. And then come out. If you have a gift of gap, you can talk. Can you see it? So in your life, we are in an age. Huh. Listen. The hour is a hot hour in the kingdom right now. Are you hearing me? I said it's a hot hour in the kingdom of God right now. Such that there is war in the realm of the spirits. What is the war? It's not just, de we're not talking about demons fighting angels, no. We're talking about war in the realm of the spirits. Where there is a struggle for the souls of men. To pull them out. And there's another struggle for the souls of men. To bring them in. It's an hour of harvest. Yet, Jesus said, along with that hour of harvest, there shall be a great falling away. Many will fall away from the faith because of the deception of the hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, glory to God. So, in verse 10, he says, make the heart of these people fat. Make them proud. Too proud to listen. Too proud to hear anything. He said, make them proud. Make their heart proud. Swell them up. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they see with their eyes. Shut their eyes so they shouldn't see. Shut their ears so they shouldn't hear. He says, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and convert and be healed. He's saying, hey, come on, make them proud. Close up their ears, close up their eyes. Don't let them understand because if they see, if they see with their eyes, if they hear with their ears, if they understand with their hearts, they will convert. In other words, they will be changed. And they will be healed. So he says, so don't let them see. Don't let them hear. Don't let them understand. So that they will not be converted and so that they will not be healed. Can you see why a man can walk into a meeting like that? And in his pride, listen to everything that's going on. And he's sick and dying. And he goes back the same way he came. Saying nothing was real there. I didn't see any miracle. They just pretended. They staged, managed everything. Everybody that went up there to give a testimony was just, he was pretending. It wasn't true. So he's going back the same way he came. And he thinks he's wise. His heart has been made fat. It says, lest they see, lest they hear. Lest they understand and convert and be healed. Why did he say that? Because of their iniquities. So he says, who will go? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. He said, all right, you go. He said, go close up their ears. Close up their eyes. Shut up their understanding. He said, because when the word of God is revealed and released, God's word goes forth. Oh, hallelujah. Why did God talk like this? Because prior to this time, he already released the word of healing. And he says, my word shall not return unto me void. It shall prosper according to what I said it. 
It says, it cannot return void. The word of salvation, the word of healing has been given forth. If anybody gets a hold of it, he will be saved. If anybody gets a hold of it, he will be healed. So what am I going to do? I can't change the words from healing people. It's got to heal. It must accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. Therefore, to stop those people from receiving the blessing while they are living in sin, he says, shut up their ears, shut up their hearts, shut up all their eyes that they should not see or hear or understand. Because if they do, they will convert and be healed. Can you see it? I said, the Word of God produces results. It is living and active. It's alive. Hallelujah. The Bible says it is full of power. Making it active. Wow. It is operative. It is energizing. It is effective. Oh, glory. Doesn't matter what you're going through. If you will hear the word of God, it will produce results. He says it will convert. Now, well, oh boy, you've got to understand when Jesus takes this scripture and then reanalyzes it for us and presents it to us, as we studied in 13 chapters in Matthew's Gospel. You can see it also in uh, St. John's Gospel. Now, and Paul also said the same thing in the 28th chapter, Book of Acts. Now, you understand that he's dealing with the converting power of the Word of God. Which means, the Word of God is a converter. Are you hearing me? When you hear it, it will change your situation. It will change your life. It will start from you. Well, it will change you and change your position. I said if you were poor, it will change your position. If you were sick, it will change your position. It will change your body. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can your mind be renewed when you take the word of God into you? He says, as we gaze at the word of God, we are metamorphosed. We are changed. Hallelujah. We are transfigured. And then he tells us how? From glory to glory. From glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You want to change in your life? You don't have to cry. You want to change in your life? You want to change in your situation? Your circumstances? Turn to the Word. It's got converting power. Are you hearing me? It will turn you around. Glory to God. You want to change? Set it on your marriage. It will change your marriage. It will change your children. It will change your home. It will change your finances. Are you hearing me? The Word of God is living and active. It doesn't fail. You can depend on it. Take it. It's a gift to man. Take it. Lift it. Receive it into you. And declare against hope. I believe in hope. Take God's word. Like Abraham, the Bible says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. My God supplies every need of mine according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I refuse to be poor because I have been made rich in Christ Jesus. I will not lack for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Goodness and mercy follows me. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Then watch your life grow. Those who are seeing you now, give them another two months. Be consistent on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.